Hi guys, I'm here to do Fragment Friday. I'm going to go ahead and read out of A Certain Slant of Light by Laura Whitcomb. And I'm just going to go ahead and start um, on page one, number one. And I'm just going to read um, about two and a half pages. Someone was looking at me, a disturbing sensation if you're dead. I was with my teacher, Mr. Brown. As usual, we were in our classroom, that safe and wooden walled box. The windows opening onto the grassy field to the west, the fading flag standing in the chalk dust corner, the television mounted above the bulletin board like a sleeping eye, and Mr. Brown's princely table keeping watch of our regiment of student desks. At that moment, I was scribbling invisible comments in the margins of a paper left in Mr. Brown's tray, though my words were never read by the students. Sometimes Mr. Brown quoted me, all the same, while writing his own comments. Perhaps I couldn't trickle the... Perhaps I couldn't tickle the inside of his ear, but I could reach the mysterious curves of his mind. Although I could not feel paper between my fingers, smell ink, or taste the tip of a pencil, I could see and hear the world with all the clarity of the living. They, on the other hand, did not see me as a shadow or a floating vapor. To the quick, I was empty ear. Or so I thought. As an apathetic girl read aloud from Nicholas Nickleby, as Mr. Brown began to daydream about how he had kept his wife awake the night before, as my spectral pen hovered over a misspelled word, I felt someone watching me. Not even my beloved Mr. Brown could see me with his eyes. I had been dead so long, hovering at the sight of my hosts, seeing and hearing the world but never being heard by anyone, and never, in all these long years, never being seen by human eyes. I, hold, I held stone still while the room folded in around me like a closing hand. When I looked up, it was not in fear, but in wonder. My vision telescoped, so there was only a small hole in the darkness to see through. And that's where I found it, the face that was turned up to me. Like a child playing at, playing at hide and seek, I did not move, in case I had been mistaken about being spotted. And childishly, I felt both the desire to stay hidden and a thrill of anticipation about being caught. For this face, turned squarely to me, had eyes set directly on mine. I was standing in front of the blackboard. That must be it, I thought. He's reading something Mr. Brown wrote there, the chapter he's to study at home that night or the date of the next quiz. The eyes belonged to an unremarkable young man, like most of the others at the school. Since this group of students was in the 11th grade, he could be no more than 17. I'd seen him before and thought nothing of him. He had always been vacant, pale, and dull. If anyone were to somehow manage to see me with his eyes, it would not be this sort of lad, this mere ashes-on-the-inside kind. To really see me, someone would have to be extraordinary. I moved slowly, crossing behind Mr. Brown's chair to stand in the corner of the classroom beside the flag stand. The eyes did not follow me. The lids blinked slowly. But the next moment, the eyes flicked to mine again, and a shock went through me. I gasped, and the flag behind me stirred. Yet this boy's expression never changed, and next moment, he was staring at the blackboard again. His features were so blank, I decided I had imagined it. He had looked to the corner because I had disturbed the flag a little. This happened frequently. If I were to move too quickly, too near an object, it might tremble a rock, but not much, and never when I wanted it to. When you are light, it is not the breeze of your rushing past a flower that makes it tremble, nor is it the brush of your skirts that starts a drape fluttering. When you are light, it is only your emotions that can send a ripple into the tangible world. A flash of frustration when your host closes a novel he is reading too soon might stir his hair and cause him to check the window for a draft. A sigh of mourning at the beauty of a rose you cannot smell might startle a bee away. Or a silent laugh at a misused word might cause a student's arm to prickle with an inexplicable chill. The bell rang and every student, including this pale young man, slapped books closed and stood, with a scrape of chair feet, shuffling toward the door. Mr. Brown snapped immediately from his, ba from his bed dream. I'll bring a video tomorrow, he said, and don't fall asleep during it or I'll make you act it out yourselves. Two or three of his students groaned at this threat, but most were already gone, mentally, if not physically. So this is how it began. When you are light, day and night have less meaning. The night is not needed for rest. It's merely an annoying darkness for several hours. But a chain of days and nights is the way in which the quick measure their journeys. This is the story of my journey back through the quick. I would climb into flesh again for a chain of six days. I am on page 68 of this book so far. Um, so far it's not a bad read. Um, yeah, I'll do a review on it, obviously, when I'm done. So, But yeah, that's my Fragment Friday, A Certain Slant of Light by Laura Wickham. Love the cover. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.